where the green palms grow tall and where we are surrounded by blue waters, we are fortunate to have the presence of a Sadhguru. Sadhguru Shivaya Subramanya Swami. Welcome, Gurudeva, to our midst. Thank you, Shakuntala. Very happy to be back in Mauritius again. Tell me how the journey was and how do you feel this morning? I feel great this morning and we had a wonderful journey through Singapore where we had a lot of signing of books, about 400 books. It took about three hours. The new book, Merging with Shiva, which we were talking about. That's right. Tell me a little bit about this new book called Merging with Shiva. Well, it's a psychological book about 50 years of my teaching. I've been teaching for 50 years, and we collected all the teachings together into 365 daily lessons. It's all about the inner part of a person, the instinctive mind, intellectual mind, intuitive, the superconscious mind, how to meditate, how to be positive, positive affirmations for a better professional life, being happier in the workplace, dealing with other people and understanding that you really can't change other people. That's a, uh, a losing matter. You can change yourself and that's a winning matter. It's very practical, very metaphysical, and it has the uh, basis of realizing that you're a soul who owns a physical body, who has an intellect, and uses emotions to get on in this world. It's a very interesting book. Uh, tell me something, Gurudeva. Do you uh, believe that we can be in the world, of the world, and yet be spiritual? Oh, definitely. Everybody should do that, and then we will have a better world. We won't be fighting with each other. We'll be peaceful, calm, and uh, mutual cooperation, consensualocracy will, you know, everybody agreeing, be behind the creative process. It'll be a better world. Why, why aren't we a better world? What are the reasons why we become what we are and create so much conflict among ourselves? Well, no one has really been exposed to a better way. And now in the world, there are many, many better ways and many lecturers and teachers and yogis and psychiatrists and psychologists and people of all religions are teaching a way of harmony, a way of peace, a way of merging our minds together so that everyone has an equal, equal opportunity to grow. And so the world is improving, I think. So if you watch CNN, you wouldn't think so, with all the conflicts and so forth that are happening. And that is a, another story, of course. Would you say meditation is the only way to transform ourselves? Because you talk a lot about meditation. It is not the only way. Um, most importantly is to get control of anger for most people and frustration for most people. We have various methods for that. For instance, if you get angry, one sure cure for anger is to take a sum of money and put it in a jar, like uh, for 25 rupees or something, and give it to an orphanage every time. Finally, it becomes too expensive to get angry. Many people have conquered anger that way, and there's another way too. After every angry, angry explosion, don't eat the next meal. And hunger will help. Uh, Make us become more aware. Exactly. You know, these negative things sort of become a way of life and everybody puts up with them. Don't have to, though. That's right. Uh, Guru Deva, you, how do you describe this mission of the Shaiva Siddhanta Church here in Mauritius? I was invited to Mauritius by uh, like three governments ago to improve Hinduism in the country. I've traveled through all the countries, through the country, lived in homes, visited many, many temples, gave a lot of lectures, television broadcasts, and radio broadcasts, and was here several times. And we finally bought property here and established an ashram. One of the missions is to give youth camps, which we do every month or two, to 50, 60, to 70, young people to expose them to a better way of life and these are all Hindu people of course but everyone is welcome and a more positive uh, way of living relating to their parents relating to their teachers and standing on their own two feet is good upstanding Absolutely. citizens of Mauritius mm -hmm. oh, that's why, only one uh, thing sure, that we're doing sure why, why Hinduism 
what is Hinduism? Who is a Hindu? Well, those people that are Hindus uh, believe in the existence of God everywhere. There's one pervasive energy throughout the universe and the law of karma. I send out energy from me, it comes back to me in the way I send it out. If it's angry energy, it comes back through others, it's angry energy back to me and so forth. And also reincarnation. And those are three things that the Abrahamic religions, which are Judaism, Christianity and Islam, do not believe in. So by process of elimination, those people who believe in these three basic principles would be the Hindus. Would be the Hindus. And I believe, uh, Guru Deva, you have been the founder of a fascinating little magazine called Hinduism Today, which treats or which studies and which does a lot of research in the different tenets of Hinduism. Uh, tell me a little bit of uh, the outreach of this magazine. Who does it touch and how does it help young people to go through it? It helps young people because it gives a Hindu pride and it touches Hindu leaders throughout the world, Hindu swamis throughout the world, it gives them up-to-date information with what the Hindus of the world are doing. And it's over the past 20 years had in, in, uh, affected tremendous Hindu pride. And it's let the other religions know that yes, Hinduism is not in the history books, it's not relegated to uh, religion classes in the university, it's alive vibrant religion with over a billion people practicing Hinduism today. One out of every six people on the planet is a Hindu. That's very interesting. We also come to this question of the mission having dedicated a lot of its energy, and I've been there myself, and I think it's a fascinating place, uh, to the spiritual park, which has a lot of pauses and which has got so much uh, to reflect upon. Uh, why have we dedicated such a huge uh, park to the general public? I mean, would you say that's also another way of touching, reaching? It, the spiritual park came about very spontaneously. The, uh, we brought in uh, very large deities of Lord Ganesha, Lord Murugan, Lord Shiva from India, one piece of stone standing nine to ten feet high, thousands of tons, thousands of pounds of stone, many tons. And it's like these beautiful artifacts created a park around them. And we're opening our doors in appreciation to the country of Mauritius, which is a fine example in the world of a community that works together, like Singapore, and has few, fewer problems than any other country. We appreciate that. We appreciate being allowed to own land here, to have an institution here, to train young people here. So it's our gift back. And we always believe that we should give back to the community. Like the government can't do everything. The police cannot do everything. The army cannot do everything. It's for, we encourage our members here, our citizens, to give back to the community everything that they develop within themselves. I think that's a nice spirit. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you basically based in Hawaii and you have an ashram there. Uh, are there many pupils or disciples who come to learn? We have a theological seminary ashram. We have 27 full-time living there uh, from Sri Lanka, from Mauritius, from Malaysia, from Australia. They speak about six languages, so our medium is English. And they are, our youngest one is 13 years of age, and our oldest one is about 60. They've been there about 30 years, many of them, many are new. So we train in the tenets of the Saiva Hindu religion and how to put across the ideas to uh, those who will listen. But we are not proselytizing a group. Uh -huh. We're an educational group. We also train priests and we oversee 48 temples. Our lineage comes from Sri Lanka. And my guru, Satguru Siddhi Yoga Swami, was the only guru in Sri Lanka, and he left that legacy to me. So 
my job is to oversee about a million people who have now scattered around the world and we've established many, many temples for them to hold the community together because of the war in Sri Lanka. Absolutely. It's a big job. I'm sure of that. Guru Deva, this is something that intrigues a lot of people. I mean, not all are, all are Hindu of Hindu faith, but the you know general criticism of Hinduism is that there are too many gods and there are too many goddesses and we are all sort of generally praying to idols and stones. Uh, how would you uh, defend the... Oh, that's uh, Christian communistic propaganda. Yeah. And they spend millions of dollars every year trying to tear Hinduism apart. Well, for over 8,000 years they haven't succeeded, but they have succeeded in improving Hindu economy. And we appreciate that. But these missionary programs have really helped strengthen Hinduism rather than to destroy it. And we want to thank you all out there if you are missionaries trying to... Of course, they do convert people, and that's fine. But those people that they do convert know nothing about Hinduism. Therefore, their new religion is the first religion that they have in their life. And we appreciate that too, because they become a better person. We believe all religions of the world have something good to offer, and if there's any criticism, it's just the people that are within the religion that cause the problem. And we have problems within Hinduism too, too because we have people. Uh, looking at the idols, or looking at the beautiful face of Ganesh or Shiva, uh, are they symbolic of something, or what do they stand for? It's like looking at a picture of your grandmother. You know your grandmother, if she's passed on, she's in the inner world, and she can see you, but you can't see her. And uh, you go to your picture of your grandmother and ask a question, and you get the answer from within. Similarly to the gods, they're a point of contact, that great being within the inner world. And they're in the inner world, alive, working 24 hours to uplift humanity. That's what we believe and have experienced. What is the advice you would give the young people of Mauritius, uh, Gurudeva? Stand on your own two feet, respect your mother and father, and behave in such a way that your discipline is perfect and you don't have to be disciplined with corporal punishment or angry words. It's for the young people to take their life in their own hands and be the citizens of tomorrow, because tomorrow you're going to make a better Mauritius. That's what we believe in every country. Absolutely. I believe you spent a lot of time talking about uh, the need for harmony in a home, to avoid conflicts. Uh, the family, therefore, has been uh, the center spread of a lot of your thinking. Why, do you, why have you put so much energy in the family and the harmony in the home? Well, in Hinduism today, I have a column called Publisher's Desk, and I special, my speciality is to speak about things that nobody wants to talk about, that are only talked about behind closed doors, to bring them out in the open, and our last issue was on wife beating, and how wives can protect themselves. Domestic violence. Domestic violence. And previous, we wrote on uh, child beating, especially in Malaysia, and uh, why that is not proper for a child to make him fear his parents. And children nowadays are pretty smart. They watch television, and it's not like, in like 20, 30 years ago. On television, they see people uh, who, that you like and love, you give good things to. And that you hate and despise, you hit and sometimes kill. So the first slap to a child, the child knows they're smart, but you hate him. And then he's looking for a new group of friends, and he joins a gang for, for love and for somebody to talk to. Because his no, parents don't like him anymore. And then the gang takes him into uh, promiscuity, sexual, and uh, drugs, and alcohol. And the whole community begins to go down. Just because of that one slap, things are never the same. Gurudeva, 
we come back to the question of the parenting, uh, the business of parenting. Uh, so you don't believe or you believe that uh, discipline is important? Spare the rod and spoil the child? <laughs> discipline is very important, Jukundala, and it cannot be neglected, but there's positive discipline and there's negative discipline. Can you tell us a bit about that? Corporal punishment, slapping, pinching, yelling, putting the kid down, telling him stupid, and trying to encourage him that way. That's negative. But positive discipline, having him go into another room, sit for one minute for if he's a five years old, five minutes, ten years old, ten minutes, come back and talk it over with the parent. The parent has to take time. The parent is the first teacher. Denial of privileges, that kind of positive discipline, and there's very good modern books. Everybody wants to copy what America has these days. Clothing, music, baseball cap on backwards. Yeah. Times a few, uh, but this positive way of disciplining a child is a wonderful thing for the whole world. Also, the copy, and it is being put in action in homes and in states and in schools and lecturing on it. We're trying to bring that awareness into the uh, Asian community. We know that in Mauritius there are laws. And we know that it's easy for government to make a law. We also know it's difficult for government to enforce the law. And sometimes the enforcement of the law, punishing the parents in a negative way, makes matters worse. So what I have all of my families here who are members of my Sabbath Sedan Church in Mauritius doing, they're going out into the community and teaching an eight-week course in positive discipline for parents and positive discipline within the classroom based on a course that we're putting forward and we're also giving it to the Honorable Minister of Education and we've done this also in Singapore. We have three schools in Singapore. The Minister of Education has totally stopped corporal punishment and are doing a new method on a trial basis. It's working beautifully, just absolutely beautifully and I'm sure every school in Singapore will be having this new method. So discipline is important, but there are two kinds, positive and negative. Thank you, Gurudeva. I want to thank you for coming to us and sharing your wisdom and your insights. Uh, and I, I know we are living in troubled times, but your words uh, will heal and bring solace to a lot of people. And I'm sure the young people will benefit a lot and I hope we can maximize on your visit here with probably some more of this sharing. Thank you. Very happy. Thank you so much.